risky. It's a high high risk, high reward type of move because if it does well, it's going to pull the listener in for the rest of the CD. If you open up with a nine minute track that flops, you've got problems. So, to me, it was risky, but it paid off because they nailed it on this one. Uh, the Dyke Master's Tale is just. I tell you what, it is so beautifully composed and harmonic. It's got the tempo changes. Um, it, it's it's just a beautiful tune. Now, the first three or four tracks, uh, Summer Land Signs, which could have been stra- it could have been a lost track off of a sab- off of a, any one of a, a number of Sabotage CDs. Um, I, I definitely got a lot of John Olivia, uh, you know, of of, of uh, getting. Uh, a lot of like Chris Caffrey on guitar. I definitely got a lot of that, um, and that's not a bad thing at all. Um, you know, on the edge um, as a is probably the the one that definitely is the single, if you will, off the off the album. That's the one that I think kind of stands out. Is that uh, My Kingdom Come again, more kind of that Maiden influence, and I won't get mad at him for you know for that either. Uh, Dust of Vengeance, for me, was the one track that was very average. Really? Uh, See, I thought it was a good track, but it was just a power metal track, Dead Up. Yeah, I didn't like it. I, I just, I thought it just was blah. But the rest of the CD, you know, especially, I really liked there at the end uh, when they did the title track, uh, and then they busted it up three sections in f- for a total of about 15 minutes. Um and, and to your point, that was kind of what they did on the last album. They did here with kind of a concept uh, three-part series of, of Tales from Beyond. So um, kind of interesting. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the CD. Um, just, you know, I've listened to it so many times. Um, can't get enough of it. I give it a very solid 8, eight out of 10. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, Klaus Dirks uh, on vocals stands out as a uh, just really good vocals vocalist with a lot of great range. And uh, actually, we were hoping uh, in the next uh, couple episodes actually to be joined by uh, a member of Mob Rules. I believe it's uh, Nicholas Fritz on drums, if I'm not mistaken, maybe joining us here on the program, hopefully soon, uh, because we'd love to talk to him more about the album. But we haven't got a chance to talk to him yet, but I'm going to be pleased to tell him that when we talk to them or any member of Mob Rules, they're going to know that Biv gave them an 8 out of 10. I give it a 9 out of 10 because I truly believe this is one of the better albums I've heard. Um, And it's so cool that on this episode, and I'm not saying this to say it with the 20 some odd albums we've reviewed since we started the show. That by far and away, the two standout albums to me out of all the ones I've listened to were both in this time period for me. Tales from Beyond by Mob Rules, incredible album. Make sure you check it out. If you're a power metal fan or heavy metal fan, especially if you dig Maiden, um, you're really going to like these guys. And Biv and I are a bunch of fools. And if you listen to Fools, the Mob Rules. Sorry, I had to go there. That was War Panzer off of uh, Mystic Prophecy's most recent album, War Brigade. A lot of war. Kind of a theme you'll hear throughout the uh, the album as you check it out. And Mystic Prophecy's a band for me. Uh, I kind of go way back with these guys. Um, first of all, super cheesy power metal name, in my opinion. Sorry, but it just is. But they always had an Iced Earth vibe, uh, Iced Earth vibe to me. That's always the vibe I got from them. And my like for these guys goes way back to their first album, Vengeance. That's when Gus G was their guitarist, of course, who now is with Ozzy and Firewind. Um, And, of course, Firewind is what I have after I get done eating very spicy curry from the Thai restaurant. But that's a whole other story. But the song When Shadows Fall off of Vengeance, I got to tell you, 
One of my favorite metal songs of all time, and I'm not exaggerating, it is on my playlist on Spotify as favorite metal tracks. You'll go about 10 tracks down. It's on there. I love that song. Super catchy, very heavy, great song. But Gus G's been gone for over a decade. In fact, Rob, Roberto Dimitri is the only original member from the band. Of course, Roberto is the lead singer, and he has good pipes for, sh- for sure. That we know. But what do we get with War Brigade? Well... I got my thoughts, but Biv, what did you think of this album? Well, um, you're right. The name is cheesy. Um, so are some of the lyrics. Um, the biggest <laughs> problem I have with this I can't believe you're going to say that. I'm sorry. We just what we talked about in the last review we did with Bob Rules. I swear you're reading what I typed. Anyway, go ahead. The, the lyrics are god-awful, um, quite frankly. They, it's just one... Um, it, one after another after another bad cliches I don't know how many more bad cliches they could have fit onto one CD so while the music may be decent to good the lyrics are awful it's funny you hold on I gotta read this I was gonna read this as part of my segment but let me read I as I was listening to this album I heard the chorus of a song and I had to write down the lyrics word for word because I was going to share them on the show because this is how bad they are. You ready? This is from the song Good Day to Die. This is the chorus. You ready? This is a good day to die. We rise from the ashes like thunder in the sky. We're fighting for freedom. It's a good day to die. We march over mountains like an eagle. We fly. The world set on fire. It's a good day to die. That, my friends, is deep. Yeah. Um, I, what they need to do. Now, I understand that English is their second or third language, and that's fine. And I applaud people who know more than one language. But um, because I, I simply never could quite pick up that second language. But get someone who understands it. If you're going to sing in English, get someone who understands English and can help you with the lyrics. <laughs> Because for me, they, it completely ruined the CD. Um, and in fact, the second and third time, I was almost laughing through the CD. It was so bad. Well, on a good day to die, I started laughing. That's when I had to go back and write the lyrics down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, musically, it's okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's not the best I've ever heard. It's not bad. But lyrically, it's got awful. Uh, I'm giving this a very, very mediocre uh, five out of ten. Whoa, see, that's a little okay. Well, let me go back to what I'm saying. Um, the album starts off with "Follow the Blind," headbanger for sure. Great sing along chorus, by the way. And then you have "Metal Brigade," which is like the obligatory. We have we're a metal band, and we have to have some sort of title with the word "metal" in it, so we can sing it and on tour on concert. You know, plotting headbanger. Slower, one of the slower tracks on the album, which is weird because you called it Metal Brigade. But anyway, Burning Out, hell yes. Love that song. Very Pantera-like riff. I get a lot of dime bag from that. Uh, Crucifix, which I know is one of the tracks, actually, that you kind of liked on the album, Biv. You did tell me that behind the scenes. Um, A very different vibe. It was like a mid-tempo like tempo rocker, almost kind of an 80s metal vibe to it. I actually liked that song a lot. Um Pray to Hell, just like uh, Burning Out, sounds like a, a like a, a Phil Anselmo like growl in the beginning of the song, which again very different. He doesn't sing that way, um, but you know, I mean, minus the white power chants that Phil Anselmo chants out, very Phil Anselmo like sound uh, in the beginning of the uh, in the beginning of the song. Again, another headbanger. You know, you probably see a pattern here. Ten thousand miles away is the only track I didn't like on the album. It's not something I dislike, but if it's on a CD, I'm going to skip it. I'm going to be honest. We talked about Good Day to Die, decent song with really cheesy vocals or lyrics. The Devil is Back is another good song. War Panzer, which we just played. Headbanger as well. The whole album is a, first of all, good riffs, an album you could rock out to for sure. I also like Sex Bomb because any band that covers a Tom Jones song and makes it metal you get an extra point on my review just for that alone. You can criticize me for doing that all you want to, but it's according to metal. It's my review and I'm doing it. So because of that alone, because you recovered a, a Tom Jones song and made it metal and because vocally you're good, musically you're pretty good. Lyrics real bad. 
but you covered a Tom Jones song, 7 out of 10 for me. That wraps up reviews on this episode as far as albums are concerned. But speaking of reviews, let's go back. The show's over. Me and my buddies out in the van eating White Castle. What did we think of Iron Maiden during the Book of Souls tour? The show we saw in Chicago just a couple of days ago. What did we think? Here it is. Scream for me, minivan! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, anyway, so uh, we're riding in the minivan. We just got out of the show a little bit ago. We were kind of stuck in some crazy traffic. Um, we had people yelling at us to move. So we got White Castle, uh, which is a staple for almost every show we go to in Chicagoland. Because there's none out by us. Um, so everyone is eating while I'm talking to you and I'll of course get their feedback as well. So, um, real quick, great show. Um, couple thoughts, um, in regards to the opening act really quick, uh, Raven Age, which is, uh, Steve Harris's son is the guitar player in the band. Um, what's weird about Iron Maiden opening bands is most of the time they get flipped, they off. Get flipped off the whole time because they're not Iron Maiden and this was no different. Even though I've heard worse open up for Iron Maiden, um, these guys weren't bad. Um, what what I found interesting is very you know Elliot said this earlier, so I'll just say what he said. I don't want to steal the slender, but very emo sounding, but yet no vocals that were emo or screamo or anything like that. Vocally, really good singer, but what was interesting about them is I don't think his vocals meet. Or, or, or belong in that music genre at all. It's really, really bizarre. He's actually a good singer. I just don't get him with the rest of the band. They're good. They have talent. It's not, you know, I think that they would be a band who could easily be a band that could open up for other bands. I don't think they'd normally open up for Maiden if it wasn't for his dad, let's be honest. But pretty good band overall. Um, you know, they got flipped off by some of the, uh, you know, the, the older crowd who's like, you're not Maiden! And that happens, like I said, all the time. But uh, what did you guys think of the Raven Age, yeah, real quick? Musically good. I thought the singer was terrible. Really? Yeah. See, I, I disagree. But I, that's fine. I thought they were all talented. Um, vocals were good, like you said. Did not fit the uh, genre of music. But um, instrumentally, everything was on fleek, and uh, I enjoyed it. What about you, Ross? Uh, musically, they were they're a pretty talented group. I just thought that the songs all pretty much sounded the same. Oh, right. There wasn't a whole lot of break between, you know, each song. So you, the chorus lines and everything were all sort of the same same flow. Plus the singer looked like he should be in The Lost Boys. Yeah, yeah, I'm Ross, you, you said earlier it looks like Kiefer Sutherland's uh, character in The Lost Boys. So anyway. Um, but I did, uh, I did like how they helped the road crew break down their equipment after, the, after their show. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And... Um, as far as the show itself is concerned, a couple of thoughts really quick before we kind of mention some songs, at least. A couple observations that I saw. First of all, what's really cool to see a, 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 ba- a band like Iron Maiden who's been touring for as long as they have. Um, they seemed, and this is maybe just me, I'm curious what you guys think, they seem to have the most fun out there that they've had on any show I've ever seen. I mean, they were joking around with each other, they were playing pranks with each other, messing around. Um, you know, just really, really good. Another observation that just kind of hit me, I've seen Maiden six or seven times. Um, It's just so weird when you look at Iron Maiden as a band, you look at the stage presence of some of them. You know, Bruce Dickinson, arguably, and I don't even know if it's arguably, is the best front man of any band I've ever seen. And he continues to be amazing. Steve Harris is great. Uh, Nico is Nico, don't get me wrong. Uh, Adrian Smith, really good stage presence, is up there, you know, rocking out normal stuff. It's so funny to see Dave Murray like if you didn't know that Dave Murray was Dave Murray and he was in Iron Maiden you'd be like what the hell is this guy doing? I mean he's kind of playing his guitar to the side of him a little bit. He's always smiling. He's always looking up at the sky. Yeah he's always looking up. It's like what the hell is he doing? He's Dave Murray. He can do what he wants don't get me wrong. But if, if, if they weren't Iron Maiden you have to be honest with yourselves and go what is he doing? I, I, Same thing with Yannick Gers who like Yannick Gers has palsy. Yeah, we get that, and he's like, he looks, he just prances around and like kicks imaginary pop cans like on the stage. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, I know, I know. Really weird stage presence as well, and it's so funny to see somebody as good as Steve Harris and as good as I and, and Bruce Dickinson in the same band with somebody as weird on stage as Dave Murray and Yannick. That's just that's one of the takeaways I got from this show that never my, really dawned on me until one now. One of my takeaways on Dave Murray was the dude's clearly been doing Pilates because his arms are like getting pretty buff. Really? He's taking, better, he's taking better care of himself. Taking, so this just in, breaking news on According to Metal, uh, my friend Elliot 
uh, has on good authority that Dave Murray is uh, taking Pilates classes. So he's doing yoga. Uh, he's doing some strength training exercises. His arms are uh, getting.